we in the modern world think we know about secrecy uh, because we go into a room and we shut a door and unless somebody has bugged the room, whatever we say isn't going any further. The ancient world wasn't like that. The only people who could afford secrecy in the ancient world were the very rich and the very royal. And the way they did it was by having deaf, mute slaves they would, uh, who, who couldn't tell what they'd seen. Uh, more or less everybody else knew that whatever they were doing was in the public domain, give or take, because life was very public. And in particular, if there was something going on in a crowded city, which was the, the something which was of political, religious, whatever significance, everybody would gossip about it to everybody else. Actually, it happens like that in communities, in colleges, in schools to this day. If something dramatic happens, even if people say we really shouldn't tell people about this, it leaks out, governments leak out, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the, uh, a few years ago, there was a very tragic thing that happened in Uganda, which is a good illustration of this. The Anglican Archbishop of Uganda, Janani Luwum, who was a great spiritual leader in the time of the uh, uh, rule of Idi Amin in Uganda, uh, uh, Luwum had spoken out powerfully, though peacefully, against the Amin regime. And and carried on fearlessly as Archbishop to stand for the message of the Gospel over against what the government was doing. He was eventually picked up by the security forces, taken somewhere and beaten, and then taken by a different group somewhere else, beaten again and given a kind of a kangaroo court, rough justice. Then he was taken off by another group of people, he was shot, his body was dumped somewhere, and there was no one person who witnessed all that sequence. And yet, by the middle of the day, the entire connected narrative was being told on the streets of Kampala. And interestingly, once that story was told, it never changed. The story, everybody got to know that this was how it was because it was such a dramatic thing that even the people who were frightened they might be um, you know, told off for doing it uh, couldn't help talk about it, and everybody buzzed about it. Now, imagine Jerusalem full with pilgrims for Passover, and something's going on. They've arrested this man, Jesus. We thought he was bringing the kingdom of God. We had hoped he would liberate Israel. Remember how the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus incognito says, um, what do you worried about. They said, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who doesn't know what's been going on there. You know, are you deaf? Have you not heard? And our idea that, oh dear, nobody was there at the trial so they wouldn't have known, is simply an anachronistic back projection from our cozy, privatized Western world. And it wouldn't work in Jerusalem today. You know, if there was an incident like that, everybody would know. They call it the Arabic telephone in Jerusalem today. You know, the people at the other side of the Western Wall will know that you're coming with your tourist party before you get there because everybody tells everybody else what's going on. And that's how it was in Jesus' day. And uh, so it, it is no trouble to me to think that people knew the sequence of events, the high priest's house, um, taking him off to Pilate, maybe Jesus in a dark prison overnight waiting between the one and the other.